Hello and welcome back to Lorefent Gaming Plays Neverwinter Nights 2. I'm your host Lorefent. In this Neverwinter Nights 2 build video, we're doing Arcane Blade. This is an Eldritch Knight, Wizard, and Fire build. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Neverwinter Nights 2 builds like this. Do not forget to hit notification bell so be updated and more. Here are the pros and cons of this uh, build. So let's talk about the pros. You're going to be basically a tank mage. Yeah, just trust me. Able to cast magic while using a sword and shield. Your armor class is going to be really up there. You're going to have access to level 9 spells. And you're going to have uh, feats up to greater weapon feats. So that's all good. Now, uh, disadvantages. You're not going to be the best wizard or the best fighter. Because you got to balance between the two. Another thing is, this is I think is a huge disadvantage is... Yeah, automatic still spell is late game with this uh, build. In other words, you got to definitely be up there above uh, level 20 in order to get those. So, yeah, you're going to have to uh, most likely use some cloth for a while or switch to plate and then still spell up to level 8. And that's about it about the pros and cons of this build. So, let's go ahead and talk about races. It's time to go over each and every race for this build. So, here we go. Let's talk about the dwarves. Now, if you want more of a durable dwarf, this is fine. You're going to get negative 2 on dexterity. You got to make it up on some ground. This is not bad at all, since it's a fighter, which is the favorite class. Gray dwarfs, this is uh, fine. Just the minus 4 charisma you don't care about. Just ECL, that's a disadvantage as well. The other one, the uh, normal dwarf, the shield ones, they're fine. Uh, Drow, this is a actually good race for it. Only thing it's going to suck is this minus 2 constitution. You can make that up. In other uh, fields as well but the dexterity intelligence are perfect i'll probably say second or third race best for this build moon elves are not bad as well uh, they have the uh, minus two constitution plus two decks which is good another one people love is the sun elves they're more inclined to wizards and they have a lot of wizard checks on it plus two intelligence that is great wild elves i'm gonna say a hard pass because minus two intelligence that's your uh, bread and butter of the build partly also, I'm going to say minus two on the Wood Elves. That's partly as well. You get the plus two strength, but you're going to lose some intelligence. So I'll probably say it's Drow or uh, Sun Gnomes. Deep Gnomes, I say if you want to go for it, that's fine. But you're going to get nicked on the strength, which is bad. And plus the ECL is going to kill you. Same thing with the minus two strength. So I'll pass on the Gnomes for now unless you really want to go for a challenge. That's fine. The Halflings, uh, they're both the same. Except for uh, one difference is uh, Strong Heart. They have an extra feat. But minus two strength, yeah, that's not cool. Half elves, both of them are actually pretty good. No pluses and minuses on any of these stats. So if you want to go for that as a safety net, that is fine. Half orcs, uh, minus two intelligence, that's bad. But plus two strength is good. If you want to go for more of a brute squad, that's fine. But I say pass. Humans are very good. You get extra feet at level one. So you get three feet to pick from, which is nice. And four extra skill points. And one additional skill point every time you level up, which is good. Plain touch. Asimars are more of a, you guessed it, paladin type and cleric type, so I'll probably say a little bit past unless you want to go for those stats. Tieflings, they're actually good. You're just going to get nicked on a charisma. That's fine, but for intelligence, it's great. Uh, Air Gensai ones, they are really good. You can get hit on the wisdom and charisma. That's fine, but the dexterity strength is good for a boost. Earth ones, okay, these are really good. This is more of a tanking flavor for plus two strength and charisma. Good. Fire, Jinsai, these are really good. Plus two intelligence, they're really nice for this build. Minus two crisp, but forget about that. And the wire ones, yeah, they're uh, really uh, good. They have plus two constitution. So yeah, definitely go for, I say, most likely Tiefling, Air, Earth, and Fire. Yanti, Pure Blood, I feel like this is the best. Plus two intelligence, crisp, and dexterity. I don't care about the crisp, but the dexterity and intelligence are great. Plus blind fighting, ECL's the disadvantage plus two, but best, uh, I say, race for it. Great uh, orcs, I say pass on it. Yeah, the uh, minus uh, two intelligence. Yeah, that's the downside of it. So I picked Yanti Pure Blood for it. So let's go over the I should say classes. You're gonna start as a fighter at level one. After that, you're gonna gain some levels in wizard. Then you're gonna bounce for back and forth between fighter and uh, wizard. And of course, once you uh, do get the requirements, which you'll easily get via leveling like normal, you get the Eldritch Knight. So yeah, you'll get that with ease. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, check out the Eldritch Knight after I'm done with the wizard. Now Eldritch uh, Knight has some good requirements. We're going to get one since we picked the fighter. Yeah, you're going to need martial weapon proficiency. 
and able to cast level 3 spells. So we'll get that naturally. This build will easily guide you through that. As for alignment, pick any. If you do not want to be smited, lawful, neutral, uh, neutral, and chaotic neutral. DET, this is just optional, just, just for fun. I say Maestro is the uh, best DET for this build if you want to go with that. Or if you want to go uh, more like Icewind Dale, Tempus. That's another good one as uh, well. If you want to be evil, Talos is fine. Uh, too bad there's no ball in there. I'll pick that. Definitely. That'll be good as uh, well. Chair's a good one for uh, good live people. And Helm's always nice. Now, for ability scores, let me go ahead and tell everybody what's going on with that. We're going to put that at 16. That We're going to stop that, I should say, at 20. Uh, Dexterity, 14. We're going to keep at that. And same thing with Constitution at 14. Intelligence, we're going to boost it up to, you guessed it, you'll uh, see 18. We'll work Intelligence to 22, then stop there. Wisdom of Charisma, I put at 10, so this way you don't have a little bit no negatives. And I like to get that Wisdom to uh, 10 to have a little bit of a survivability with will saves. So, final is uh, Strength to 16, Dexterity Constitution to 14, Intelligence to 18, and Wisdom and uh, Charisma to 10. As for Intelligence, we're going to get that to 22 when we level up. And then Strength, we're going to get that to, if I remember right, yeah, 20 or so. Yeah, so we'll start with Intelligence and stop there. Then, of course, go to Strength. As for Background, I'm going to say Devout's the best. If you don't want no backgrounds, then do no backgrounds at all. So, we're going to go ahead and select uh, that if you want to go uh, that path or no backgrounds like I am. As for skills, uh, we're going to get concentration up when we become a wizard, but craft weapons and armors are fine just for basic crafting. Uh, pick a talking skill, intimidate, bluff, or uh, diplomacy. I decide to do diplomacy. Definitely focus on uh, tumble and, of course, spellcraft and use magical devices. We'll be using some items that we're normally not allowed to use. With this build, but we're gonna be able to uh, use it thanks to uh, that. So we're uh, done with that part. As for feats, uh, listen up. Uh, very important. So we're gonna pick two feats. Now, if you're a human, you get an extra three. We'll go over that quickly. I say do the weapon focus right away, which is weapon focus long sword. Yeah, good idea to go sword and board with this build so you kick some serious butt. And we have blind find since we're a Yanti pure blood. If you're not that, that's fine. And we already got one requirement knocked out was Weapon Proficiency's Marshal. We got Alertness as well, which is uh, nice for our, I think, uh, Pure Blood Yanti. So, and here's the uh, deal though. Uh, as for the skills, you want to constantly uh, level up, you guessed it, Spellcraft. You need to get that uh, before you get to level 20, I think 21 or so, to uh, above. I think it's uh, 22 plus or so, so this way you have the automatic steel spells. Uh, more on that as I go level up. See, there's the other stuff we get as well because we're Yanti uh, Pure Blood. Let me uh, go ahead and finish that since we get another feat to pick. So here's the deal. If it's your second feat and your last one, pick Luck of the Heroes. That's the best I could, I could say because you get one AC, some of uh, us will saves. All the, uh, actually, all the other saves. If you're a human, pick Spellcasting Prodigy. That's another good one as uh, well if you could try to do that. If not, Spellcasting Prodigy or uh, you know Luck of the Heroes. My final advice is you're going to start a little slow. You're going, to, you're going to remove some of your armor and shield to cast spells if you want to go that route. If not, you're going to have to still spell your stuff when you cast in a plate with a shield. You'll become powerful later on. So let's go talk about spells next. Please note that level 0 spells you have access to all. You just got to remember which one you want to pick in the spell slots that you're limited to. So that's very good news. Now someone I suggest you stick to and then... Uh, every other type if you want to go with that as always experiment now i'm not going to mention for level one but i'm going to mention this ahead of time if you get true strike go ahead and do it that's the upside it's a nice spell the downside is the uh, plus swing attack it lasts only one round so if you really want to finish off a of foe cast that and pop that baby so let's get to level one spells let's do go over the level one spells magic missile that's 1d4 plus one damage and, of course, you get one missile per two levels. Maximum is five. Good spell to soften up foes. So you go in with your sword and destroy them after that. Or axe or hammer, whatever you prefer. Identify approves lore checks. If you want to save money for identifying items, well, pop this baby. And with your high lore checks with this build, you'll identify them easily. Just uh, remember, you don't have to pay 100 pieces of gold when you pop this sucker. It lasts for a little bit, but still, it's great to have. Summon one. Summons a wolf to fight for you. So here's, here's the deal on this, everyone. 
You can use the wolf A or A as a distraction or B as a tank. So you go and use your magic and soften them up. You can also use the wolf to soften them up as well. Shield gives plus four shield bonus to armor class. Blocks magic missiles. Yep, this if you feel, feel that foes are casting magic missiles, pop this sucker. Endure elements grant 10 slash uh, resistance against elementals. Very good spell to have against uh, elementals you face early on. Let's go ahead and talk about the remaining level 1 spells. Protection from alignment plus 2 armor class bonus against certain alignment creatures. So if you want to protect yourself against evil, for example, pop this baby, then go fight against evil foes. Mage armor plus 4 armor bonus to armor class. This is great for if you're not wearing any cloth. So if you're in transition of, for example, casting spells without, uh, I should say, a shield and or armor, pop this sucker on. Sleep, put four hit dice foes or lower to sleep. Any, anything like five hit dice or above, it will not work. This is a great crowd control spell. Use it. Color spray, knocks unconscious blinds and or stuns weak creatures. So if there's a whole bunch of weak creatures coming towards you, pop this sucker and then go after them one at a time. On to level two spells. The mirror image spell, very useful spell by the way, creates decoy duplicates of the caster, 1d4 plus 1 per 3 caster levels. So if you want to really troll some enemies, pop this sucker, then you go in the battlefield, they will be able to miss you big time until there's no more images left. By that time that happens, they die. Darkness, 20 feet radius of darkness. Now, uh, this is great for uh, sneak attacks, I'll uh, say, but it's also great for you to uh, troll some foes. Knock opens lock or magically sealed doors. Please note this will not open any of the plot doors or treasure chests as well. If you don't have a rogue in your party, you don't have Nishka, for example, use this spell. Now, summon two. This will summon a dire badger. This is better than a wolf. So if you want to use that for a distraction or a tank, go ahead and do so. Gust of wind knocks down some creatures and clears gaseous effects in the area. You see cloud kill, pop this sucker. Very useful. Let's go to the remaining level two spells. Mouse Acid Arrow, Bolt of Acid does 3d6 damage on hit plus 1d6 per round until spell expires or until they resist it. Now, uh, this is a very good spell to use. Now, back in the day in the second edition, use this on trolls. This will be a Trolls Bane spell, but still, this is a good spell to uh, use to soften foes up. Ghostly Massage grants 5 slash magic damage resistance and immunity to all level 0 and 1 spells. Great protection spell to have. So if you want to have protection against, uh, I should say, magic missile, pop this sucker. Cloud Bewilderment. Stun and blinds enemies for 1d6 round of damage. I should say 1d6 round, actually. If you want to troll some enemies or use crowd control, that's the spell to do it. Lesser Dispel Magic. Dispels a limited amount of uh, spells and buffs and such. There's direct challenge. So that's great to have. Now, honorable mention are the uh, buff spells like Bull Strength, Cats, Grace, and Sarah. You get those, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, potions are uh, good as well with uh, those. On to level 3. This is now where you're going to start getting AoE spells and such. Fireball does 1d6 fire damage per level. Maximum is 10d6. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. This is a great softening up spell. Just make sure your friends are not in the uh, line of fire. But still, pop fireball. You kill your foes off or they'll be weak enough for your blade, hammer, or I should say axe or whatever uh, one-handed or two-handed weapon you use to finish them off. Hey, so friendly targets uh, in, in the AoE up to caster level receives 50 plus percent in movement speed, plus one attack rolls, plus one AC dodge base, and an extra attack per round. Extremely useful buffing spell. Buff this like crazy for everyone. In fact, if you ever find the boost of speed or something similar like that with haste on it, yeah, it's uh, golden. Displacement, target gains 50% concealment. In other words, 50% chance of likely, I should say, less likely for them to hit you unless they have something like true seeing or something like that. Good uh, buffing spell. Summon three, this will summon a dire wolf. Now, if you need another summons that's more powerful, this is it here. Let's go ahead and finish off the remaining level three spells. Spider skin, you gain plus two natural AC, plus two saves versus poison, and plus two hide checks. Goes up to one for each of those at level 6, 9, and 12. Max on those is 5. This is a good buffing spell to uh, use and abuse, so if you want to face against poison creatures or any creatures are sneaky, pop this sucker. Flame arrow does 4d6 plus 1 fire damage. You launch one more arrow every 4 levels, so you start with one arrow and then you get more. Very powerful uh, spell to use. Again, use it to soften up foes or uh, try to finish them off. Dispel magic. This is a 
much more powerful version than the lesser version. Has a better chance of dispelling spells and buffs. Again, direct challenge. It's a good way to get rid of those annoying buffs. Just like the lesser one, but much better. Whole person paralyzed one humanoid for one round per character level. Very nice to have. Now, honorable mention, I'll say, is lightning spell. You shoot a bolt lightning that's straight. Just watch out for the ricochet and such. But still, if you want to abuse that for electric damage, yeah, that's a good spell to use. On to level 4. Here are some level 4 spells I'm going to go ahead and suggest. I-6 Lesser Missile Storm grants 1 missile per level, maximum 10, each inflicting 1d6 damage. Like I said before, gr pretty good spells soften up many foes or destroy them. Whatever's left, use your uh, melee weapon to uh, kill. Next up, Elemental Shield Creatures Attacking Caster takes fire damage. 1d6 plus 1 per caster level, while the caster has resistance from fire and cold. Very powerful buffing spell. Use it. Ice Storm AoE spell that does 3d6 blunt damage, 2d6 ice damage, plus 1d6 ice damage per caster level. Again, great spell to soften up foes. If any foes, or I say, are fire foes weak to ice, abuse it. Stone Skin grants a 10 slash anti damage reduction for 100 points before it goes bye-bye. Good self-buffing spell. Use that. Summon 4. Summons a dire board to help you. Use it to tank. Or the troll foes. Let's get to the last set of level 4 spells. Great invisibility. Target becomes invisible. Can still attack while in this form. True seeing can see through this. This is a great buff spell to use. And this will give you advantage in combat. Unless someone has true seeing then you're screwed. Lesser spell breach. Removes up to 2 magical defenses from your foe. Abuse this if they are face out against say a wizard for example or a cleric. Least spell mantle absorbs the equivalence of up to 1d4 plus 4 spells. If you need protection against spells, this is it. This is the first tier of it. Everett's Black Tentacle, a UE spell that does 1d4 damage. Being grabbed is 1d6 and can be paralyzed. Again, great cloud clear or just enough to weaken foes. Lesser level and vulnerability makes caster immune to up to level 3 spells and lower. Again, another great protection spell. You don't want to be fireball. Cast this first. Uh, let's go ahead and do level 5. Now we're starting it to the good stuff here. Level 5, summon 5. Summons a Shadow Method. That's like a Shadow Dark to fight, fight for you. Again, use the tank control. Lesser Planar Binding summons an Imp if you're evil. A Fire Method if you're neutral. Or a Celestial Wolf if you're good. Again, another one of those uh, spells you could use to have it to tank or troll for you. Cone of Cold does 1d6 the damage that's frontal in front of the caster it does 1d6 damage per cast level max is 15d6 again another great cloud clear if any foes left destroy them firebrand does fire damage in the area that is 1d6 per cast level max is 15d6 it's like uh, cone code but it's like in an area you pop this sucker use it to either weaken foes or destroy them lesser spell mantle this is better than the least one absorbs the equivalent of 1d6 plus 6 spell levels Again, great spell to uh, use against spellcasters. Abuse this if you need to. Big V's imposing hand. Hand grabs one foe. Foe suffers minus 10 attacks. So if you face a tough melee foe, go ahead and pop this. Then you go in and uh, make them suffer. This missile forces summon creature to return from which it came. Really useful against summons. I will tell you this right now. If a caster decides to do annoying summon on you, pop this sucker. It goes bye-bye. Unless it does a save. Lesser Mind Blank protects targets from mind effects and other uh, uh, natural things as well. It also removes mind effects too. So it's good for yourself, number one, and also number two. If someone else has that on them, pop it on them as well if you can. Now, next up is Arc Lightning. Bolt targets two creatures. It does 1d6 damage at two targets and anything in between. This levels up every time you level up. Max is 15d6. Pick two targets that's far away from each other. Anything in the middle. That's foes. They die from it. Cloud kill. One, two, three. Hit dice. Foes die instantly. No save throws. Four to D6 hit dice. Must make a four two save or die instantly. Success on that is one D4 con damage. So in other words, they'll lose constitution hit points. Anything over six uh, hit dice foes, they take one D4 con damage unless they make a save and take nothing. Very, very useful room clear. Pop this sucker. If uh, foes have a uh, one to three hit dice, they die. Four to six, they make a save. Or if not, they die. Whatever's left from it, kill them. Let's go ahead and go to level six. Greater Stone Skin, 20 slash and anti damage reduction. Absorbs 150 hit points of damage before it goes bye bye. 
Great protection you use on yourself. Pop it, and then you go tank and go to town. Summon six. This will summon a die bearer to fight for you. Use it to tank or troll. Next up is Planar Binding. Summons either a succubus if you're evil, a synth that's like a fairy-like creature if you're neutral, or a celestial bear if you're good. This is like a better than the lesser one. Use it to troll or tank. Up to you on that. Chain Lightning. First target takes 1d6. For castle level, max is 20d6. Anything after that only takes half damage. Another room clearing spell, really useful. So if this thing keeps going arcing, 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 you still will do enough damage to uh, make your foes cry more, noob. Next up is Isaac's Greater Missile Storm. So here's the deal. This is AoE spell that shoots a missile that does 2d6 damage, max is 20d6. 10 is the maximum number of missiles you could have. And let me tell you, against a single foe, goodbye! Against a, I should say, a whole bunch of foes, it softens them up, then you go in and whack them with your melee weapon. Let's get to the other level 6 spells. Undead to death slays 1d4 uh, four dice worth of undead per spell level, max is 20d6. You see a whole bunch of undead, you want to clear the room, go ahead and do so. Whoever's uh, left, you kill. True seeing target with this can see hidden foes. This does include hiding and magical means of hiding with that. So in other words, if they decide to be really annoying, like for example, with greater invisibility, pop this sucker to spot them. Glove of invulnerability makes casters immune to level four and lower spells. So if uh, some uh, fool wants to do, I should say, ice storm, for example, on you, you pop this and laugh at them. Greater spell breach strips up to four magical defenses from an opponent. This is better than the lesser one. If any foes are really annoying on uh, protection spells, pop those and hopefully four of those or uh, under that goes all away. Let's do level seven. Summon seven. Summons a huge elemental to fight for you. Again, this is a great tank and or troll summon. Finger of death. Target makes a 4-2 save or die instantly. So if a target makes a 4-2 save, target uh, of course uh, takes 3d6 plus one per caster level. Very powerful spell to one-shot someone or attempt to. If you cannot, well, finish them off with melee. Energy immunity grants immunity to either fire, ice, electric, acid, or sonic. And this lasts for 24 hours. Very good, I do mean very good buffing spell. Pop this on yourself if you're facing, for example, a fire elemental and you grant yourself fire immunity and have fun with it. Shadow shield, caster receives plus 5 natural AC. And then, of course, I also received 10 slash magical uh, resistance there. And immunity to death effects, necromancy spells, and negative energy damage. Very powerful buffing spell. Buff it on yourself. Just trust me on that, please. Let's get to the last set of level 7 spells. Delayed fireball blast. Fireball that is a set as a trap upon trigger. Foe takes 1d6 fire damage per castle level. Max is 20d6. So you cast this ahead of time, they trigger it, boom, they take fire damage. It's a great way to either clear the room or I should say definitely weaken the foe so you go in there and destroy them. Banishment gets rid of up to two summons in the area. So if there's multiple casters like using multiple summons, pop this and then laugh at them. Mass hold person holds all human and human like targets in a 15 feet radius. If some uh, human targets coming towards you or some like elves, pop this and hopefully if they get held. Have a good time with them. Morakenai's sword summons a magical sword that helps the party. Another great summon to ear a troll for you or tank for you. Now on to level eight. Greater planar binding summons ear a Ernest. That's a evil demon creature with wings. That's if you're evil. Huge elemental if you're neutral or celestial dire bear if you're good. Uh, again, it's another one of those uh, summons you can use to tank someone. I say tank with. Or use it to troll. Summon 8. Summons a greater elemental to fight for you. Again, another one of those tanking uh, sp spells. Like, for example, use it to tank. Or definitely troll. Both of those summons are very good. Just pick which one you prefer. Sunburst does 1d6 per caster level. 25d6 on the undead. Non-undead only takes a flat 6d6. Vampires must make a reflex save or die instantly. They get fried, just like if they're in the sunlight. All targets in the area must make a reflex save or get blinded. The ultimate undead room clear. Pop this sucker. You can clear out most, if not all, the room full of undead. If there's any left, melee away. Very useful against vampires, especially against a certain part in the original campaign. Horrid Rithling. All targets except for undead constructs take 1d6 per castle level. Max is 20d6. 
a uh, very good AOE room clearer. So you pop this sucker, and if they don't die, you're by that spell, your uh, melee weapon will kill them. Mind blank grants immunity to mind affecting spells that affects the caster and allies. Just like the lesser one, but it spreads out to everyone. Powerful buffing spell abuse this. Here are the final sets of level 8 spells. Premonition, damage reduction is 30 slash Amantite. Absorbs 10 points of melee damage per caster level. So you can absorb a lot more than 150, I'll tell you that now. Very powerful buffing spell on yourself. Use it and then you can go tanking if you want to. Protection from spells. Comforts plus 8 to saves versus spells for 24 hours. Again, this will uh, buff up your save throws against spells. Since our spell cra crafting is high, it'll add to uh, that as well. I should say definitely, I'd say in the save throws more than that. Power Word Stun instantly stuns targets under 151 uh, hit point dices for a period of time. If they're over it, it's not going to work. If not, they're stunned. And then you'll go to town on melee. Incinerary Cloud. Cloud deals 4d6 fire damage per round. This is another room clear. Pop this cloud. And uh, if they don't uh, s I survive the cloud, that's good. If they survive the cloud, your melee weapon will finish the job. On to the last level sp uh, spells, which is level 9. Gate opens an inner planar gate to summons a devil. The devil will join your side as long as you have protection from evil on you and your party. If not, this devil will attack. Here's the deal. Pop the gate in front of a whole bunch of foes since most of them will not have protection from evil. And let the uh, devil go to town on them. And also make sure you have protection from evil so this way you can watch while you eat popcorn doing this. Big Lee's Crushing Hand. Single target spell. If held, target takes 2d6 plus 12. Uh, for rounds equal to the castle level. So, for example, if the castle level is 12, it'll be 12 rounds, so it'll be helpful for that damage. And let me tell you, that single target will suffer while you just keep on hitting with your melee weapon after. Well, the Banshee, non undead must make a 4 2 save or die instantly. Very powerful room clear. If uh, any of them didn't die from the well of the Banshee, you could finish them off with your melee weapon. More canized disjunction attempts to get rid of all magical buffs on the target. So, like for example, if there's an Archmage that's really giving you trouble, pop this sucker. If it works, goodbye to every single one that Archmage's magical buffs. Let's get to the last set of level 9 spells. Meteor Swarm does 32d6 to a single target in the area, which will most likely finish him off, or 24d6 to a group of foes. The Ultimate Cloud Clear. So if there's any, a whole bunch of foes there, unless they're immune to fire, Pop that sucker, most of them will die. Anything left, your melee weapon will finish the job. Mass hold monster, attempt to hold all monsters in the area. Pop this sucker on these monsters, they're held. You could go to town with your melee weapon on them. Weird, target in area must make a will save or else make a final 4-2 save. If they fail the 4-2 save, they die instantly. Success, they only take 3d6 damage. Those immune to mind effects will not feel the spell at all. So as long as they don't have Mind Blank, that's fine. So if they don't make the two saves, they die instantly. That's right. Game over for them. It reminds me of a certain Bard's Tale 1 spell, or I say th one, uh, 2 or 3. Uh, you cast down a whole bunch of foes, they die, and that's it. That's what it's like similar to uh, that spell, which is weird. Last but not least is Ethereal Nis. Caster and companions travel to the Ethereal Plane until any of them makes a hostile action. This is a very good playing spell, so you cast it with everybody, get them all in the position. After that, someone starts to attack, mainly a tank, then you will go in, of course, destroy foes like crazy. That's about it for level 9 spells. Experiment with every single spell from 1 to 9, so this way it feels like what's best working for your play style. Now, for the next part of this build video, we're going to go ahead and level up our characters from 2 to 30. Now it's time to go ahead and level up our character. We're going to go ahead and start with the wizard for a little bit. So let's uh, get a few wizard le levels out of the way. There we go. Now we're going to put some points in the concentration. That's going to be our, one of our main skills as well. And don't worry, we'll uh, catch all that up. Our uh, main one, Spellcraft. We're going to definitely get that boosted up big time. And we'll try to get the other ones if we uh, can. If not, we'll catch up. I'm going to pick general... I should say spell school for now since it's very good pick your own if you want to on the others Now I'm just going to go ahead and what I did with my suggestion from you uh, guessed at the list But still 
And if you're playing a wizard, and if before you get it, you have a few scrolls, yeah, save those so this way you don't have to waste it when you level up. So let's go ahead and get the ones I want Endure Elementals, Identify, Magic Missile, Shield, and many more. Yeah, there's uh, True Strike. Yeah, I'm going to definitely get that. I enlist it really because I just mentioned it like an honorable mention when we got the level zero spell. That does this for one round, that gives you 20 attack. I should say more like 20 attack rolls. And as for familiars, I'm going with the rabbit since it'll give you plus one to all saves. You heard me right. I felt like that's the best companion pet out there. I say familiar more like it. Up to you all and all that. Some people pick the uh, other ones like the bat and of course the beetle. I just like the rabbit the best. Others pick the cat because they're cat people as well. They're uh, cool. So after I'm done with that, let's see what else I have to uh, definitely do. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to show you all those real quick. Yeah, beautiful people like it because one extra hit point. Oh, we'll get a lot more. And that's about it for this level. And we're going to go ahead and go again to the wizard. So we're getting now to level two for the wizard. Concentration, craft weapons and armor if you uh, can. Diplomacy if you can. If not, we'll get that next time. Spellcraft. We'll definitely get tumble and use magic device if we can. But we'll catch that up. Don't worry. And those are very easy to definitely catch on up. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, at this point, I'm going to pick Able Learn. You're asking, Fenton, why is that? Well, first of all, our cross-class skills will be d down to one for the cause, number one. And number two, it'll help out when we jump back from the Fire and Wizard, Eldritch Knight, all that goodness. That's why you always want to pick it when you multi-class. With something like a Wizard, or Fighter, or I say Rogue, or I say Cleric. That's just a combination just giving examples of. Now for a bit, we're going to go ahead and do the fighter levels. Why is that Fenton? Well, here's the deal. We're going to try to get Leastly uh, weapon specialization out of the way. Now, we're going to put some points in intelligence until we get to 22 intelligence. Once we're uh, there, we'll stop and put the rest in the strength. And yeah, see, it'll just cost one point. We'll, put, we'll max out concentration. At this point, I'm going to try to max out spellcraft and anything else. We'll easily max those out big time. We'll have some store points along the way to effect we're going to get more and more intelligence so we get ourselves another feat and looks like unfortunately I'm forced to uh, pick a certain one so uh, let me uh, go ahead and pick I could have done was uh, exotic weapons but not we're uh, kind of stuck here I, I probably should have also done was pick something else at the start but that's all right we'll do combat expertise that's a good one to uh, do and unfortunately we will not be able to uh, do the power attack cleave and great cleave because we're getting some meta magic feats as well combat expertise is like this anyways uh, when you pop this uh, your uh, attack rolls will be minus three however your AC will be plus three so it's like a defensive one so let's keep on leveling up our fighter once again concentration craft weapons and armor diplomacy if you have enough points spellcraft definitely try to get that tumble and of course use magical devices so try to max those out. Yep, we got our tumble up there. Every 10 points in tumble, we get one free armor class. We're at least we, uh, go ahead and get one free armor class in that. We'll get items to uh, fill out the rest on that. Let's level up some more, everyone. This is going to be our level 4 fire now. So every 4 levels, you get ability point up, which is uh, good. But for now, it's not that we're past that. But still level 4 fighter is uh, really uh, nice because uh, there's a feat I want to definitely get. Put the usual suspects in there and I'm looking for his, gr I think it's called weapon specialization. Weapon focus gives you plus one on the weapons. Specialization on the other hand gives you plus two damage which is uh, good. And uh, let me uh, tell you it is uh, great. And we get ourselves another feat. So here's the deal. Since we're going back and forth between one and the other we're going to do still spell. Now what Still Spell does is, uh, if you want to equip, I say, a full plate armor and a shield, you are, you'll be able to cast magic. However, it'll cost one spell higher. So if you want to cast a, with, I say, plate and shield, for example, a level 3 spell, you're going to have to uh, use up your level 4 spell slots in order to uh, do that. It is still very good, and we'll be able to automatically Still Spell this stuff later on, which will uh, be like... A normal wizard, but you're casting in plate and such. So we're back to the wizard again. We're going to do this for a while until level five for the wizard. So it'll be three to five. Put your usual suspects in there concentration, 
craft weapons and armor, spellcraft, tumble, diplomacy if you can, and use magical devices. And uh, at this point, we're uh, at the second level spells, or those of you who played the Ultimate Series, Circle 2. Yes, I went there. So I'm just going to get Lesser Dispel, and I always like Mirror Image, because you abuse that crap out of that. So we'll uh, go ahead and level up our wizard. So there you go. And let's go ahead and pick that. Now we're going to put a point in intelligence. We're going to get some more, I should say, skill points because of that. So yeah, every even number you get bonuses out of that. Just remember that in any Dungeon Dragon games from the first version until the latest, which is version 5. So we'll uh, use the usual suspects. We're going to max out using magical devices. And that's about it for there. And we get more spells to pick. On their set of level 2 spells, which is good. So we'll level up the wizard one more time to get you guessed at level 3 spells. Because the Eldritch Knight is so easy to, you know, get the prestige class. Because we already got the fire at level 1, the prerequisite. And we're about to get the prerequisite next when we level up the wizard one more time. So pick the wizard. Concentration, craft weapons and armor, diplomacy if you want the talking skill or other talking skills you want. Spellcraft. Let's see here, tumble and use magical devices. And now we get ourselves another feat to pick. So I prefer spell penetration. So we get plus two bonus against our foes on their resistance. That's why I picked it. So this way we do some more damage with it. So uh, next up we get ourselves another feat as well. Uh, now I decided to do is practical spell casting wizard. This will give us a nice edge in our spell levels when we cast spells against certain foes. Very useful to have. So since we're doing wizard spells, we're going to abuse that. I did not pick combat casting because you get that free when you're Eldritch Knight. So we got the level 3 spells. We got the prerequisite for that. So next time we level up, we go with the Eldritch Knight. Now it's time, everyone, to go ahead and do the Eldritch Knight from, you guessed it, 1 to 10. We're going to do all 10 in one swoop. Eldritch Knight, we're going to go ahead and pick that. Select that one. And now we're going to do is concentration, craft weapons and armor. Let's see here. If we could do diplomacy, if not, spellcraft. And that's about it. Now we get that feat. Uh, so that means uh, every time we level up Eldritch Knight, is as if we're leveling up a wizard, we get some spells. We also get combat casting, so we get our boost in concentration checks and such. And skill focus concentration, so we get bonuses in that as uh, well. So combat casting is also useful in combat, of course. So you get that free. Do not pick combat casting when you level up before this point. When you level Eldritch Knight, you get that free. I'm just telling that twice so people will get a nice uh, saying, Oh man, that's good. That's one less feat to worry about. Usually you get combat casting in Neverwinter Knight games. That'll help you out greatly. We'll do the Eldritch Knight still. Put the skill like I am doing. Any cross-class ones, go ahead and uh, do. If somehow you uh, fill up the other ones, you can't do any more. I do advise a price this way we start getting nice discounts at a shop. See, we got three on that end, so we're looking good on that. And now, like I said before, when you're Eldritch Knight, you uh, do get as uh, spells as you get wizards. That's why we'll be able to cast level 9 spells level later on. We'll pick our uh, prestige class, put your points in intelligence. Now, we have the right later on, we get the epic levels for IMAX still spell, but I like to get at 22 to even things out. Always even things out in the Neverwinter Night series, the Baldur's Gate series, the Icewind Dale series, you uh, name it. Even playing Skate Torment. So we're going to get our, uh, boost our points there, store some for later. And let's uh, go ahead and pick Improved Critical. This will be Improved Critical Longsword, for instance. So here's how it works. So for example, if you have a longsword that's 19 through 20, so 19 or 20 rolls a critical hit. The game will now, because of this feat, roll 17 through 20. This stacks with Keen. And that drops down to 15 through 20 for the dice roll. So 15 through 20, you'll critical hit. Now we're getting level 4 spells because of this uh, prestige class. So let's keep on going for the Eldritch Knight. So let's uh, go ahead and pick the skills. Concentration, craft weapons and armor. If you can't do diplomacy or your cross-class skills, spellcraft, definitely get that tumble and use magical devices. I pick use magical devices, so this is why I can use items I'm not allowed to use and I feel are good. Some instances there are some good monk robes that almost works like plate. And you can equip those as well later on down the line. We're still at the level 4 spells. Don't worry, we'll get the level 5 spells next. Just remember, start scribing scrolls like crazy when you're leveling up your character throughout the campaigns. 
So let's pick our prestige class still since we're on that path itself. So let's uh, keep on going, everyone. Uh, and if we can do any cross class, if we can, if not, that's all right. We got enough points to store. Now we're on, you guessed it, level five spells for those you play the Ultimate Series Circle Five. And yeah, I'm just picking the ones I uh, prefer to get most. Just remember, fill the holes if you uh, do need those uh, spells. For example, if you've already got Cone of Cold, you scribed it right, well, pick something else. So we're just going to go ahead and level up our uh, Prestige Class characters a lot more. We're uh, getting close to, uh, I believe, the, uh, I should say, 10. Yeah. Then we're to Knights 2. Prestige Classes are either capped at 3, 5, or 10, depending on what Prestige Class it is. The Eldritch Knight is 10. So we get ourselves another feat to pick and choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and do Greater Spell Penetration. So instead of plus 2 now, we get plus four bonus against uh, foes against the resistance. So uh, now we're at level five spells. We're finished that up and now uh, we're gonna get to level six ones next. So let's see here, so many good options. Hey, yeah, I'll do cloud kill and that's a nice one. And now we'll level up once again our uh, prestige class or I call it magic knight as well. Now this is the last time put your points in intelligence. Keep at 22, un I should say uncapped or I should say natural. And uh, after that, just from here on out, focus on strength. We're trying to balance out the uh, powers of might and magic. Yeah, I went there. Uh, sorry, no feats. That's all right. Now we got the sixth circle of magic, or I should say level six. And there you go. So we'll just keep on uh, going with the Eldritch Knight. So let's go ahead and do that. Pick this one, that one. Pick the uh, skills, main, your main skills. And then the other ones, you uh, go ahead and go pick the cross-class ones if you can. Now, if we uh, fill out a praise, I'll start putting points in the lore. We're almost going to catch up with that. We'll miss it by one. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, select our uh, level six spells. There you go. We got True Seeing, which is nice. So let's level up our uh, Eldritch Knight. We got two more levels to do that, and then that's it. Then we go to the Wizard. And let's uh, go ahead and pick this one and that one if we can. And uh, there we go. Okay, I forgot to craft weapons and armor. I'll be able to catch up with that sooner or uh, later. And let's see. Oh, yeah, let's see here. Okay, there we go. And there you have it. Now we get ourselves another feat. And let me see which one I can. I could have did power critical, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do his uh, toughness. So toughness works like this. So every uh, level you get, you get a free hit point. Now this is retroactive, so for example, you're, uh, level, you get this at level 20, then uh, you get 20 free hit points, which is uh, good. And uh, now we're at the level 7 spells because we're Eldritch Knight. In other words, yeah, so we're as if we're a wizard. Now if we we're a sorcerer, we'd be uh, like getting sorcerer spells we have to pick and choose from wisely. So uh, let's uh, keep on going. Same thing with our bard, I think most likely. Yep, I'll just uh, fix the armor, craft armor I messed up on. If any cross-class skills you get to do, go ahead and do so. Now, let's see here. Okay, we got that. We got a few points. Let's put a point into, if I can, lore. And I believe that should definitely do it, or another point there. And let's finish up the seventh uh, circle of magic, or level seven spells. And that should definitely go ahead and do that. So now we're going to get to the wizard. Okay, we got 10 levels in the Eldritch Knight, so we're going to go for Wizard for a while. So this is going to be the last level for the non-epic levels. See, we cannot do the, uh, that Prestige class because we hit the cap for it. So let's go hit the Wizard. We're going to put a point starting into Strength. When you get that to 20 by time, this build is definitely over with. Just remember, Concentration Craft Weapons and Armor. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, Diplomacy if you can. Spellcraft, big time, get go for that. Go for Tumble big time also on that as well. Use Magical Device 2. And let's go ahead and finish that up and get our level 8 spells. And that should definitely do it for the non-epic levels. Now it's time to go into the epic level. So we're going to start with the wizard from the wizard level 7 to 12. Usual suspects, concentration, craft weapons and armor, spell craft, tumble, use magical devices, and talking skills if you want to. And of course, a praise. If you have enough points into lore, go ahead and do so. See, official epic character. You heard me right. We're epic characters now, so this is good. Epic spell penetration instead of plus four, which is bonus uh, against our foe's resistance. We get plus six. So uh, that is it. All right, we're uh, there. Now uh, we're finishing up that you guessed it. 
the level 8 spells. I always like Sunburst, but still try to get it in scroll form so you can scribe it when you're at that time so this way you save some money. And yeah, that's the only downfall of this spell. I forgot to mention is cost. You're buying uh, both in uh, Might and Magic. That's going to cost a lot of gold. And there you go. It says that we're epic characters now. So let's pick our wizard. Yeah, we're we'll just keep on going on the wizard until we get to 12 for that class. And we uh, finish the last four levels as a fighter. So let's uh, go ahead and select that. Let's see here if we can. Oh, no, nah, appraisal. Nope. Pick the uh, normal skills like uh, the blue ones and, of course, spellcraft. Yep, there you have it. And now let's see if we could do anything else. Okay, and I'm going to put some points in the lore as well. We're going to start catching up little by little. And there. And let's see here. Oh, yeah, level 9 spells now we have access to. Yeah, it took a little while, though, but we uh, did it, everyone. I consider that a win-win situation. So let's uh, keep on going, and let's select this uh, now. So we'll level up our wizard once again. Yeah, usual suspects for the skills. You can do any cross-classing at this point. It'll help you out greatly. And uh, there you go. And uh, let's just uh, keep on going after we're all done with that. And let's see here. Okay. Let's see if we could do it. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this out of the way. Great strength. Now, if we didn't do it, we would be at 19 strength exactly. But this will uh, get us closer to having even, I should say, strength. You always want even, I should say, ability score. So this way, you have uh, the uh, modifier. So, for example, at 19... You'll only get four, you get to 20 strength, you get to uh, five on the modifier. Helps you out greatly. That's for all the uh, stats in the game, not just strength, not just intelligence. So let's uh, keep on uh, going and keep on leveling up some more. Now we're going to put our points in the strength seat. There you go. And look at that. So we're at level 24. We just have to do level 28 and that's it. Yes, every four levels you get ability score up there. So let's select those and let's see. Okay, we're all set and good to uh, go. And there you go. We'll put points on the lore as well. We're going to start filling that up too. So now what we're going to do is go down there and we're going to do is automatic still spells. So automatic still spells work like uh, this exactly. Instead of having that one spell slot, you have to go, like for example, in order to uh, still spell level 3 spells, you have to use up level 4 spells. But now uh, it's 0 through 3 as if you're a normal wizard. So you can wear a plate, use a shield, and then of course go... Uh, you cast uh, 0 through 3 spells. We're going to do this uh, two more times at least to uh, get to level 9. So at this point, still wearing cloth. Still do that until, of course, uh, you get to level 9. Or circle 9 in some uh, people's uh, minds. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, keep on uh, going. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get another uh, feat. Oh, there it is right there. Automatic still spell where it gets uh, th zero through six. So it adds three more spell levels. So instead of zero through three, now we have four, five, and six. We could wear a plate to uh, cast those spells. I advise still using the cloth a little bit until you get the zero through nine. Then go full blown cloth, go full blown sword and shield, and you're set for casting magic. So let's uh, keep on leveling up our uh, wizard at this point. Okay, I made a mistake. I just want to make sure uh, everything's fine. Okay, let's see here. Oh, yeah, level up your wizard, put your sk skills there. Uh, there you go, and I think this is it for the wizard class. After that, we'll uh, go to the fighter, which is 5 through 8. Once we finish, and that should definitely do once we select our spells. Now, uh, from this point on, it'll be four fighter levels, so we're going to do that exactly. So we'll pick our fire levels. We'll still pick our, uh, for example, concentration since it's locked in. Uh, above a certain threshold, so that'll be count as a uh, regular skill. And also, since we have able learn, it'll be like a regular skill to uh, put points into. Now we're gonna automatically still spell zero through nine. So once you do that, you'll be able to cast spells like a normal wizard, and you'll be able to wear you guessed it, full plate armor and a tower shield since you're a fighter with a sword. Yes, you're a tank mage, but in Neverwinter Nights too. Congratulations on that. See, I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Ignore the uh, arcane failures because you're basically still spelled. Yeah, the regular still spell when you do one spell slot higher and using, of course, plate and a tower shield. Yeah, you got cast spells without any problems. 
Put your points in strength at level 28, everyone. This is the last time to uh, do a ability score, so there. Now we have 20, you guessed it, strength. So this is a good for our modifiers, so let's keep on going to our skills. We're closing in on uh, capping, and oh yeah, I forgot to uh, mention, we already got one free AC since we have tumble at 10. So I'm going to go ahead and pick epic proudness. So this will uh, do is give us a uh, plus one to our uh, attacks. So like for example, we attack three per round, we get one extra plus on all those, which is a good thing. So let's uh, keep on uh, leveling up and keep at it. Yeah, just uh, yep. See, there we go. Now we just hit the uh, cross class skill max, which is 16. We'll fill items we need to. I'm gonna go ahead and add, show you why I picked Combat Insight. So Combat Insight works like uh, this: instead of our strength modifiers, for example, it's plus four. Add to our weapon damage, it'll be our intelligence modifier will be added to weapon damage. So if it's higher than strength, so we get plus five on that since we do have that naturally. So if we have more intelligent items, that modifier will definitely go up a big time. And if you have a two-hand weapon, it'll be 1.5 on your intelligence. So yeah, just be careful on that. That's why I have a uh, shield and a one-handed weapon. So let's level up our fire once again and just keep at it. Let's go ahead and pick that. Select our fighter. Usual subject for skills. No more cross class at all. Since that's capped, so our regular skills will now be capped except for lore. Lore, unfortunately, will be stuck at 32. But that's all right. And there you go. Now we're going to get this greater uh, weapon. I think focus what that does is instead of uh, I believe a plus one I think you get is a plus two on that so it's a good thing and that's it for leveling up our characters now we're at the gear section so let me give everybody some advice about gear and Networds are Knights too in order to for example get 10 intelligence you gotta make sure you have an item that is actually 10 intelligence you cannot do a 8 and then a 2 it'll only pick the 8 so wherever's the highest uh, item you want to pick, you go for that. So for ability scores, you are say attributes. You want to go for strength, and then uh, strength and intelligence. Go for intelligence, then strength. After that, dex and constitution. If you need wisdom, go ahead and boost that. Boost up your will saves big time. Get your tumble up there as uh, well on items. And if there's any immunities, go ahead and grab that. Also, uh, get your haste. Get your true seeing items if you can. Keen up your weapons. If not by you, a party member. Uh, definitely go for acid damage because they're very nice in Neverwinter Nights 2. And if there's anything else, like for example, armor class, go ahead and do so. If you find ropes that are better than heavy plate, get that as well. Next part is uh, build video or do combat demonstration. Now we're at the part of the video called combat demonstration. It's all I always do. So you definitely want to bring potions if you want to. Buff up like crazy. So let's go ahead and go against these foes that are not immune to critical hits. No worries, you could do crits on them. So a good idea is always to uh, go ahead and use spells that will clear the room. Like for example, well, the Banshee. So let's go ahead and get surrounded. And most of them should uh, die at this uh, point, see? Now we got the stragglers who, uh, of course, resisted that. And we'll be able to finish them off really quickly, see? Let's see, power of might and magic. We use magic, then we abuse them with might. Simple as that, see? They're about to die, and that was an easy battle. So you're asking Fenton the big question. What are they immune to critical hits? Like, for example, the undead or evil outsiders? No problem at all. Now, we still use the same tactic as use, of course, magic. In case sunburst is a great way to get rid of the undead, for example. If it's evil outsiders, then uh, use other spells like weird or rithling. Meteor strike if you uh, can. Now, evil casters, you definitely want to do Morakai's disjunction spell. This will remove their protection. See, his protection is now gone. And we're just going to go ahead and hack him into pieces. It's the same as, uh, of course, uh, before with, I should say, foes that are, you uh, guessed it, not immune to critical hits. But they're immune to critical hits, that's the difference. But still, the attack is almost basically the uh, same. You just go uh, crazy with your melee weapon. And that is the combat demonstration of video. So here's my final advice before I go. Now, when you uh, do start out, it's going to be a little bit slow. You're going to be constantly changing armor like crazy or keep the cloth on when you're a wizard. But once you get, of course, I say still spells, things will slightly pick up nicely. 
And once you get automatic steel spells, then that plate armor and that nice tower shield will feel more comfortable. Definitely uh, make sure uh, you do AoE attacks first if you can to clear the room. And if there's any stragglers, kill them. Most likely you're a tank. If not, someone else is a tank. Then you uh, go ahead and wait until, of course, they get the attention of foes and you wreck them. Other than that, this build is very, very powerful towards the end of the game, especially here at the 20s or definitely the 30s when you have all the feats that you uh, require, especially the IMAX still ones. This is it for my Neverwhere Tonight's 2 Arcane Blade Eldritch Knight Wizard and Fire build video. This is Lorefent signing off. Thanks for watching and have a great day or night and do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more guides, builds, and other videos from Neverwinter Nights 2. If you like what you see, then pick my suggestion on the upper left-hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left-hand corner. Have a great day or night and do enjoy the view.